Okay, what is piercing the corporate veil? Well, this is an extremely important concept that applies to all business entity types that offer limited liability. Basically, the state says this, we grant to the business a separate entity status from its owners. Okay, If you do not treat this business entity as separate from yourself, as a separate entity, then you could subject uh, yourself to personal liability for the business entity. That is, we will, or the court will pierce the veil of protection, of limited, li limited personal liability protection offered by this business entity status, and you will be treated no differently than if you were partners. Okay, and uh, each owner can be subjected to, to personal liability for the debts or, or tort liabilities of the business. Now, so what would the court look at in saying, should we pierce the corporate veil and hold um, the owners personally liable for the debts or liabilities of the business? Well, first they look at ownership. Is there a maintenance uh, system in place, the keeping of meetings, etc., that is separate from from the individuals acting on behalf of the business. So look at the formalities or the maintenance in place. Two, the business will look and say, is, I mean, the court will look and say, is the business adequately capitalized? That means, is there enough money in the business to support ongoing operations? Or um, have the owners pulled all the money out of the business so it's really just a shell? There is no ongoing entity or business operations. Everything rests back with the, the shareholders. And third, and, and maybe most importantly, uh, the court will look and say, was there an intermingling of funds? Did the business entity treat its bank account just like the personal bank account of the, um, the owners? So say uh, I own a limited liability company and I write personal checks to pay my mortgage, to pay my car insurance, to pay whatever out of the uh, business bank account. Well, that's using that bank account as if it were my personal bank account, and that's that's intermingling funds. Okay, um, and perhaps I write checks routinely to the business and don't keep up with that as capital investment. Again, that's an intermingling of funds. You're not keeping the separation between business assets and um, and personal assets. So in that case, the court it would be extremely willing um, to disregard the business entity and subject the owners to personal liability. Um, other situation would be whether um, there's an adequate insurance policy, which goes to the capitalization of the business. So if there is tort liability, is there funds to pay the business? Uh, others, uh, other um, factors would be in the case of uh, corporate um, entity and subsidiaries, is there an intermingling of control there, etc., so that the subsidiary and the main corporation should be treated as one, etc. Um, so bottom line, they look to see is the uh, corporation, is the business entity, the alter ego, okay, and they call it the alter ego theory, um, is it the alter ego of the owners? And if that is the case, that is, is justifiable then to pierce the uh, level of, li of liability protection, pierce the veil, and subject the owners to personal liability for the debts or liabilities of the corporation. Okay.